again everybody it's me Audie with Middle Earth Mentors and before I start anything else in this video spoiler alert okay this video major major spoilers this is a festival guide for the new midsummer festival and that is also why my screen is pointed towards the ground because you don't get to this area in the game until uh, level 105 ish so and it's a it's a major um, place in the books. It's Minas Tirith, it's the White City, so if you are following things in story order, this is major spoiler for you. Do not watch if you do not want to see the White City before you get there in the books or, you know, in, the, in your storyline. Um, yeah, you've been warned. I'm about to pull my screen up, so if you don't want to see it, look away! <laughs> for the rest of you, look at how pretty it is. Okay. So, this is a one-off video. It's not um, fitting in really with the rest of the Middle Earth Mentors videos in the fact that it's just a, f a quick festival guide for this new festival. So it's temporary, festivals are temporary, um, and this is just kind of for those people looking for a quick way to finish the fest um, that they can do on multiple characters quickly to get tokens um, without having to grind out everything. Disclaimer, this is not anywhere near all of the available quests, okay? Nor does it touch any of the other regions. There are, re there are quests in like four other regions of the game to do with this festival. We're not going to do those today. In total, there are something like 50 quests or 47 quests. I don't know. There's a whole bunch. We're only doing 14 or 15 of those today. So what this is, is a route that takes about 30 to 35 minutes, depending. Um, obviously it will take longer if you don't have a horse. <laughs> um, it is concise, straightforward, requires no backtracking, and is enough quests to do the daily wrapper, which requires you to complete 10 each. So at the end of each of these rounds, you will get between 45 to 48 tokens per round basically um so what this is is basically a route made for people that have a lot of alts or who just want to do the daily wrapper quest um on multiple days so if you want to do it 10 days in a row the daily wrapper only requires you to do 10 quests there's no point in doing all 50 however many there are that takes like you know an hour and a half to two hours depending of course it could take less but for me, I have 13 characters. I don't have time to do all 50 quests. However, I do want to get lots of tokens still and fulfill the daily wrapper. So this is an in-between, okay? Um, as well, I have to give credit where credit is due. I didn't actually make this route. Um, this one is made by another very helpful Gladden player named Trifolia. And she came up with this route as a quick way, basically, to do what I just said. Get tokens and cut time off. Now, I altered this route a bit. Um, I changed some horses around and I added a few quests. So it's kind of a hybrid route between hers and mine. Um, there is a shorter version of this that is only 10 quests. So if you want to cut your time down to about 22 minutes, you can knock off some of the quests that I pick up. Um, but other than that, we may as well get started. It's going to be a little bit of a, a trek. Um, usually this takes me about 30 to 35 minutes. For the sake of this video, I may um, just, you know, point you in the right direction and then cut out me actually doing the quest because that's pretty straightforward. Uh, but we'll see. So this character has never been to this festival before. She got the pop-up quest here when she logged in and it gives you a map that looks like this. Click it and it will take you back out to the gate where we were just standing. So when you first come here for the first time, your intro quest is going to be slightly different. For every time after that, it will be the same, you'll have the same route. So when you first come in, pick up this lady's quest. It's the same as the one that was just over here. This lady here is the daily wrapper lady. You always want to start with her quest regardless. No matter what, every day, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it before, pick up this lady's quest. Why? Because she's the wrapper. So when I say wrapper, what I mean by that is she gives you a quest that only completes once you complete a chunk of other quests. So it basically wraps around all the other quests, if that makes sense. 
You can see the rewards here, very worth it. Click accept. She'll give you a second one. This is the daily wrapper. Participate in the celebration of Midsummer 010. Pick this up every single day. So basically she's asking you to do 10 quests of the festival and when you're done those 10 quests, you'll go back to her and complete this for an extra five tokens. Um, don't forget this. <laughs> Once you pick her, she'll give you a third remote quest. These, these ones you don't need to have on. They will auto-complete in background for you. Don't worry about those. So right off, I'm actually going to remove these others here because we don't need to see those for right now. Pick that up. Okay, that's it. So right off the bat, your first quest, which you picked up from that lady over there, is going to be talk to Aragorn up in the tower. Now, like I said, if you have not done this festival before, none of the other festival quests open until you talk to him. So, and this, is, this only happens on the first time. Your subsequent times through this fest, you do not have to go talk to him. So your first step, go to the stable master, click high stables, which will be open to everyone, and travel. Now, as soon as your screen comes up, get off. Dismount. You don't want to ride all the way to the stable, because then you just have to ride all the way back. <laughs> so mount your horse, or if you're on foot, you can run. Turn around, take a hard right and right again, and go up all the way to the top. So for those of you who don't know, of course, the Midsummer Festival is basically Aragorn and Arwen's wedding and we're doing the preparations and the celebration to do with that. So they've decorated the whole city of Minas Tirith and all the lands are coming to, you know, celebrate and all that cool stuff. So there's a lot going on here. So go straight through the square to this door here. Tower of Exelion. I, I hope I said that right. <laughs> and we'll run down to see the king. And we'll take a minute to glory in the majesty of this hall. Look at it! It's amazing! Okay. <laughs> Talk to him. Now, that first quest was the actual festival quest. If you click him again, you can see here, book one, chapter one. These are epic quests. I'm going to pick them up. However, this guide does not include the epic quests. This and so this lady here is to do with the epics. I'm only clicking her because we're already here. So what you see me doing with these epics is basically just picking them up so that I can do them later. You do not have to pick them up if you don't want to. You do get a cool free horse at the end as well as a free housing item. Um, I won't spoil what that is. The horse looks amazing. And it also comes with a war steed appearance, although it doesn't say it does. It does. <laughs> um, so you can grab those and do them at another time. I'm not going to do them today because Mana's video um, just before this was to do with those. So you can watch those if you want to do the epics. I do them separately in two separate chunks just because, I don't know, I'm weird I guess. But this, so this is me doing the, the epic part. So if you're not doing the epic part, just ignore me running around here right now. <laughs> I just click her because we're really close and then I can get it started at another time. So, that quest you just got from Aragorn for the festival sends you to this lady. Midsummer's Welcome, finish that. And then you can see a whole bunch more open. So for our guide, pick up all the quests here except Lightning in a Bottle. Leave that one off. So pick up Wedding Supplies to the last drop. Something floral. And what ails you. Then go across here to this guy. Click him. He has one quest, pick him. This is the epic, so I'm just going to click that while we're here. And then continue across, take a left, and the florist right here will have two. And that's it. So that is seven quests that you will have picked up from this top layer. So then you get on your horse. Let's use this horse. Goat, whatever. So now begins the actual fest route. <laughs> So we'll ride down here. And they made it really cool that the music changes in all these little different micro zones so much. They blended it together really well. So instead of going to the horse master, take a right. To right to this first door here. 
Houses of Healing, the High Hall, go in there. Da, da, da. Run up the stairs and you'll see there's a quest giver right there. Click her, accept. And this hall is, I mean, they're all enclosed. So just run around, basically you're picking up dirty bottles. So click them all over the hall. And you're also chasing away noisy revelers. So I don't know if you saw that there, the other player. When someone else clicks on one of these noisy revelers, they'll walk away and be unavailable for you to click. They do respawn rather quickly, and you can click the same one more than once for yourself. Um, so just keep that in mind. So th there's a number of things in this festival, as I will go over as I hit them, that will disappear once someone else uses them. It's tedious and annoying. I don't know why they did it for this festival. Um, but you can see that the noisy reveler that the other player got just before me, he's already respawned, so it's not too big of a deal. Just click him, and they'll go away. So that's this quest for this hall. Run around in this hall. It's very small, as you can see. I'm right here. Just run around in here, pick up all your shit, and then when you're done, turn in. Alrighty, so we're done the quest. We're back at the quest giver. Turn in quest there, and you've got your first one done for your list. So then you leave the hall, same way you came in, of course. Mount your horse. Meow. There we go. So we're going to ride down one level, so take a hard left there. We're going to go down the ramp to the level below us. As well, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I don't know how the quality will be in this video. Um, <laughs> my computer doesn't like handling busy places and trying to record, and I'm recording in a very low FPS. So if quality is shit, I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. So anyways, you come down here to the Houses of Lore, and we go in here for our next set. And this one also has multiple quests in it, which is kind of nice. So right away, go, jump up on the table, click all these green flower arrangements so that you can place the flowers. So there's four down here on the bottom, and there's two up top. So we'll go up here, we'll take a left. Run to the top of the stairs, turn around. So go straight through the doors here, and then take a right at the very end room and go up to the last two floral arrangements here. That's your second quest done. And then turn around and run out to this guy, Kaladan, and pick up his quest. He needs you to pick up envelopes of his professing his undying love for some lady that blew away when someone opened the door. So, as you can see, this is what they look like. They're envelopes, they fly away, you have to try and catch them. This is, as we'll watch this person try to unsuccessfully catch one, I'm not going to take it from him. But again, this is one that will disappear when someone else clicks on it. Now, you can see him trying to chase these and not catching it, it's because it's too far away. So I'm going to show you the trick to how to make catching those super easy, and it's not that. <laughs> First of all, okay, there's one. So click on it. Now you see how the circle beneath it turns green and blue? Blue means you're close enough, green means you're too far away. It's going to constantly move. So what you do is once you click on it, get ahead of it, and click U. There, picked it up. So you, you get to where it's going to be, roughly, and some of them are kind of erratic. And then instead of trying to click it with your mouse, click the U button on your keyboard and it picks it up right away. See, look at that, two for two right away. So like I said, they will disappear. So if there are other people in this hall, you have to run around and look for them as they respawn um, alongside other people that are doing it. So once again, um, I'm just going to cut it here while I run around, get these envelopes and you can do the same. We'll be right back when we're done. Alrighty, we're all done. So then we came back to Coladan to turn in our envelopes. Click finish now. And you're done in this building now. So we will head out to the next place.
Okay, and immediately out the door of the horses, horses of lore, the houses of lore, take a right and go right into the thirsty seer, which is like 14 steps down the street. And in here we just have one thing to pick up. So head straight all the way back to the wall, take a right, and go straight all the way back to the other wall. You can see right there, barrel of ale. There's no additional quests in here, so you literally just pick up this barrel, and that's it, you're done. And we'll head back out. Okay, so now we are going to mount up. It is faster to use your war steed here if you have one and if um, you are okay with riding a war steed in a town like this. Normally I do ride my war steed here. Uh, for the sake of this video I won't because I think my recording program would probably have a meltdown if I tried to do that. <laughs> so we're just going to use the nice horse. <laughs> and it's not like it's, you know big rush. It's not like uh, we have ugly scenery or anything. It's gorgeous here. It's nice to look at. I totally want these lanterns for my house. Look at them. Oh, it's so, pretty. so basically what we're doing is we're just riding north along the circle we're in to the closest horse master. Click her and we're taking our horse to the city stables. Now, this is the one I was talking about that will be a little bit different um, when you come here subsequent times. So the route you just saw us do is the route I take for my very first time at a festival. If this character had just logged in and was standing here and this was her second time doing the festival, for example, she would start with the wrapper quest, like I said here, and then immediately go into um, the city stables. Now, you don't have to. Um, because you'll come back down here in a second anyways, but there's a quest right here to do, so pick it up. We gotta run to the back here and pick up our grooming tools and apples and then we'll help the horses out. But, so what I was saying was you start with, you, for your second time you can start with this quest and then after this quest you would go up to the very top and pick up all of those other quests that we picked up from the people up at the very top and then just continue the exact route that we just did or you can do this exact route every time. It doesn't matter because um, you end up coming down here to the main level regardless of which order you pick. So honestly, it's completely up to you. So basically here we just need to groom the dirty horses and give the well-behaved horses apples, which is what we're doing. So run around the whole stable, do this for all of them, and when you're done, I'll meet you back at the door. Okay, we're back. We're done with our horses, the lady has a ring, click her, done. Off we go, out of the stable. So you can get on your steed again. You can see the little bit of lag going on there. When this area was first released, Minas Tirith, it was the laggiest and most overdone region in the game, and the devs actually <laughs> admitted that they had ambitions much too high for the game engine's capability when they made this place. So it's laggy on a good day for most people. Usually I don't lag here, however, with the added festival and the number of people that are here right now, I get a slight bit of lag, like you can see that little hiccup with my goat just there. That's about all I get. Sometimes there will be a brief pause, like I'll go to pick something up and the, the game will hitch a bit. So really it's minor, it's really good, and I'm running everything on ultra high, so it's, it's harmless, but um, be warned that you probably will experience a little more of that here than you're used to. <laughs> um, so anyways, we just rode a little bit from the gate. We rode south picked up the florist's daughter, she runs around here, and she sent us to pick up flowers. So there's a couple flowers right where you just saw me pick up. We'll grab some here. These thankfully do not disappear um, once someone else picks them up, so you don't have to worry about waiting around for them to respawn.
Now normally I would cut this out, but these flowers are spread out a little bit across um, the area. So as you can see, they start here and they spread out pretty much down to here. So it's in this big area. And it's really easy to find them if you just hit the delete key. It see, highlights everything right away. However, in Minas Tirith, it also highlights the myriad of plaques and statues and door markers that are in the city, because there's like a million of them. Um, so that can get kind of annoying, but if you're in the general area, it will locate these two. So <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Click over here to our summer flowers. I think the last ones are just there. There you go. And you can see on the map, it's in that highlighted spot, which will disappear as soon as she picks up the last flower. There, see. And the ring tells us to go back. So, once again, get on our horse and ride back to the florist. Or goat, whatever. Oh, these people, they're so happy. <laughs> War is finally over, and now they get to party. All right, so here she is again, running around. Continue your quest. Now, don't leave before you forget to click on this checkered blanket. We're making floral crowns, basically. Don't do what I did, and click her, and then leave, and forget to finish the rest of it. <laughs> so now, get back on your horse. We're going back to the main stable master, which is north of where we are. So we're going here. Click the stable master. This time we're going to the soldier's tier. And you can just ride your horse all the way up. You don't need to get off early. Okay, straight ahead, pick up this guy's quest right away. Get on your horse again. Head south. We're going south, right? Yeah. Well, southish. And we're just going to ride all the way to the next tavern, which is a little bit away. Oh, not tavern, sorry. Um, actually, maybe we are going to the tavern. Haha, <laughs> I can't remember the order, I just know the muscle memory of doing it. <laughs> we'll see, yeah, we're going to the tavern, that's right. Come on, brain, keep up. So then you make a hard right all the way around to the splintered shield. We head on in there. Now this one, before you start with the quest that's already here, run in, take a left up the stairs here. This quest is so fun. I love this quest. It made me laugh when I saw it, and I enjoy it every time. Click this guy right here. Accept his quest. New quest, toss a coin. If you are <laughs> a video game person, you probably know what that means. There's a minstrel. What do we do? Toss him a coin. <laughs> I just love it. I know it's silly, but I just love the nod they give to, you know, TV shows and stuff. Oh, now, something about these. These disappear if someone else uses them before you. Um, so, if they're not here, if you're following the same order I'm doing, doing these in order, and they're not here, it just means that someone used it before you, they do respawn pretty quick. Now, what I found out, which is cool, is that if you're doing this with someone and you both click them at roughly the same time, it counts for both of you. So, yeah, there's, I was about to say, there's one supposed to be here, but she's not, because there is someone doing this quest just ahead of me. So go down here, down the stairs, take a right to go down again. Now, there should be a lutist standing right here. Oh, flutist, there we go. There she is. Toss her a coin. Get this barrel of ale in the corner, because that's a different quest. Now, this one is interesting. It seems to change daily, and I haven't nailed down the pattern yet. You sample glasses of wine, so pick any glass of wine at random. Oh, excuse me. I'm <laughs> burping and I haven't even had wine yet. <laughs> Your character will sample it. If it's the correct one, all of these will disappear. If it's a gross, sour one, you're going to get a funny message that tells you it's gross and sour. You have to keep going until you find the right one. So this one, see the fizzling effervescence on your tongue. This wine is not supposed to have bubbles or something like that. So pick a different one. This can take a little bit, um, especially if you click them all 
and they're all wrong until the very last one that you click. So just keep at it. Now, that said, once you find the right one, generally it's the right one for all of your following tunes. I have had it switch sometimes, so I don't know if the table switches the pattern like after a certain number of uses or something, but often it will be the same one that your alt just did. So you can keep that in mind for help. I'm going to cut here because this takes a while and I'll come back when I find the right glass. So have fun getting real drunk. Okay, we finally got it. Oh my god, I drank all the wines on the table. Pretty sure I died and came back to life. Okay, after you're done that, they'll all disappear as you can see. Jump over the table. Don't forget to click this barrel, which will become available after you found the correct wine. So leave that room. Go to your right this time. And then left into the sleeping room, right up the stairs. Wow! Don't fall off the stairs like I just did. And your last musician that you toss a coin to is up here on this corner. Hee <laughs> hee! Never gets old! <laughs> okay. And come back out, out of that room, go up the stairs. And we're gonna turn in. Don't forget to turn in this quest before you leave. Like I have done. <laughs> So go back up the stairs here by the door, all the way up to the very top where the dude is. And that will be it for this place. Finish. All right, now we head out. All right, once again, get on your horse. It's a small ride to the next place. So you can see the leg here of it and just not catching. That's the sort of thing that I get in Minas Tirith. It's different for everybody. I mean, some people have the leg here so bad they can't play. As you can see, f most of the time for me, it, it's fine. It, it's not an issue. But it, I guess it just depends on your system. You can see there slight hiccuping. It's just this really overdeveloped place. <laughs> but it's so pretty, I know. So anyways, follow the road all the way to the end. We get to the Mumak and Keep. Go in there. This one's really easy. You run straight to the back. You can see the barrel of ale there. Pick up the barrel of ale. And that's it for this entire place. There's nothing else to do in here. So then you leave. Now we get on our horse again. And we're going to be riding to the stable master. So where we are right now, we're here. We're going to be riding all the way to this stable master here. So just follow the road around and I'll meet you there. All right, we're back. And you can see we're at the soldier's tier horse. So we made it to the horse. Now, something I wanted to point out, they did fuck up the map in this iteration of Minas Tirith. So basically what happened was, because all of these tiers are named, as you can see, when you get to player's tier, the, the name has been scrunched down into the craftsman's tier, and that repeats the entire way up. So when you're looking at the sage's tier, where the letters are, it's actually not in the right place. It's the one up. So for example, this citadel isn't supposed to be on a tier. It's supposed to be up here in the very center. So basically all the names have been shifted down one. So that can get really confusing if you're looking, you're like, oh, I need to go to the players tier and it ends up sending you way the hell up here because the names are a little bit fucked up. Um, so if you just follow this guide, I'll tell you the proper names to get to where you need to go. The first three are correct. Workers, soldiers, and craftsmen, they're correct. And these are in the right order. They've just been all slid down, kind of, if that makes sense. Um, so you can figure out where each one is if you look closely, but it's really confusing and annoying, so um, just follow the guide if that makes it easier. <laughs> so anyways, we're at the Soldier's Tier Horse. Um, go now to Craftsman's Tier and dismount as soon as your screen loads. So as soon as you can, dismount. Get on your own horse and turn around and go right back down the ramp. So this dude standing here on the corner and Complete the quest here, artistic direction. Do not pick up the next quest from him. Just leave it. And then turn around and ride all the way back up this ramp. <laughs> 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 
hang a right and hang a left and duck into this little alcove here. This potter, click her, continue her quest. And right behind you, generally, there is a wedding supplies box right here. We're going to start picking up wedding supplies. Now, again, this is one of those things that disappears when someone else uses it. See, as you can see, someone else used it before me. It just appeared, so we're going to use it before it gets grabbed by someone else. Nice try, buddy. And then go right here into the House of Craft. As you can see, those are hot commodities, those disappearing items, unfortunately. So if we go down here, take a left. Oh, see, he was just in here. There are two more wedding supply boxes in this hall. Um, they have disappeared because somebody else is using them, of course. Like I said, they do respawn pretty quick. But if you have someone else right behind you, like this guy is, and this person, they're not going to be here. Yeah. So we're actually going to, because there are, there are others. Oh, there's one. Oh, big leg spike. Well, there's one, anyway. And there's the other one. Perfect. So once you get those two, you can leave the craft hall. Don't pick up any of the quests in here. We don't need them. Now you can... Oh, actually, you don't need to get on your horse. Just leave the craft hall and go straight to the horse master, which is literally right outside the craft hall. As you can see, she's right there. Click her, go to players tier, and once again, dismount as soon as your screen loads. Click dismount, get on your own horse, and we're going to ride right back down. What that's doing, that port, port and get off, port and get off, is just saving us the ride across the whole tier to get to the next horse master. Instead, we're just jumping a tier up and then riding half the ramp instead of the entire tier. So go straight down, click on this lady here, Cereal, or Curiel, I'm not sure how you say it. Continue hers and pick up her next one. So sweet treat, accept that. She has a plate of pastries there for us, pick that up. And then once again, get back on your horse. Go back towards the ramp, because there's two hungry guards that we're going to feed that are walking around. You can see one right there. Ah! So come back, I have sweet treats for you. Uh, when they stop walking, the ring disappears, which is kind of weird, but it will reappear when he starts walking. Come on, dude. I have your treats. There he goes. So continue quest. And then keep running past the ramp. Don't go up it. And the other guard is over here. Again, that is one where they sort of use and disappear if another player is doing it. But if you do it at the same time as another player, if you're doing it with a friend, it counts for both of you as long as you both click him together. So that's, that's really convenient. The other guard is walking around here somewhere. And he should be here in the square. So, oh, there's one. And they have a bit of a, a, a roaming path. Like he roams this entire square. So you can just keep that in mind. Anyway, so we fed him. We're turning around and going back towards where we just picked up that quest. So that's headed south on this tier. Now keep your eyes open because there are also additional wedding supplies to pick up here. Because we got the two in the craft hall, um, we have extras here, which is nice. So if you missed the two in the craft hall, there are five here that you can still get. So don't stress too much. So there's one literally right around the corner from where that cereal person is. Go through this hall here. I don't think there are any in here. Nope. But there is a hungry guard around here somewhere. There he is. So you're doing two quests at the same time right now. So once he decides to come back online, we'll get back on our horse here. There he goes. Feed him. Ride just a little bit down, and on your left there will be some stairs up here. There's another wedding supplies just here under the awning. Get back on your horse again. So now we're done with the wedding supplies. But if you're not, that's okay. I'll show you where the other ones are. So come down around this corner. There's another guard right here. 
There's a wedding supplies right here across from him. It's not lit up for me because I've done the quest. So that's your fourth one, if you haven't finished. And then your fifth one is here at this door right there. So then continue on going south. We're still going south in this tier. And then take a right into the Merry Swan. This is another easy one. Just run straight to the back. Up here. Put your two flowers up there. Turn around, run back down. Go to your right a little bit. Up the stairs and there's another ale right here. And as you can see, I had a big lag there. For some reason, that staircase lags me every time. When I come up it, on every character, I have that hiccup right there. <laughs> I don't know why, it's like a fucking lag black hole or something. So you're done in the Merry Swan, you can leave now. So once again, get on your horse, and we're gonna go turn in that sweet treats quest that we finished to cereal, that chick standing by the oven. So that on your map is right here. So just continue on along this tier headed north, same way as always, and I will meet you there. All right, we made it back to Cereal or Curiel. Turn in her quest. You can see on the map, we're just here by the ovens of the craftsman's tier, so we didn't go far. Now we're gonna ride straight back up that ramp that we originally came down from above. So just right up all the way here, and we're almost done actually, so pretty quick and at the end of this you'll have roughly 48 tokens depending on if you've done the fest or not. I believe it'll be 45 for the subsequent runs but I'm not 100% on that. So as soon as you get up here take a right, go down a little ways to this dude, Dag here, turn in, turn around, go back, pass the horse master. We're basically just giving everyone food samples. Right here, uh, left here under the arbor Pelnen, turn in him. And you can see as you're riding along the quest rings on, on your map. See, right there? So there's another one. So left to Gwarben, turn into her. Keep going the same route you've been going. The next one will be on your right, up the stairs, these little bit. There she is. Continue on the same way. And this last one here, Brandion, you can finish. Keep going straight, and we're going to end in the Blue Theater, which is the coolest building ever. I love this place. It's so neat. So come in here. Right away you see this guy. Pick up his quest. It is kind of a tediously annoying quest, and you will see why. Um, but it's the last one. So run all the way to the end, straight, and um, finish these three floral arrangements, and that will complete your second to last quest. And take a look around while you're in this hall to see if you see any NPCs with a ring. Because, see, there's one up there. Uh, no one else. Sometimes there will be one standing right here. Sometimes there will be a dwarf standing right here. So that quest we picked up at the front, basically we have to tell the musicians that are playing in the theater today to get their asses to the stage. The other, the only problem is, so is every other player in the freaking game. And what's annoying about this quest is that not only do these disappear when you click on them, they reappear in a different spot. So this hobbit, next time he respawns, will be down there in the corner on the floor. So it's kind of annoying um, to find them all. There's only five. However, the good news is, once again, like the other ones, if you're doing this with someone, and even if you're not, even if you're just solo, I've noticed that you can click on these after someone else has clicked on them, so long as they haven't walked away yet. So you can see he stands here for a little bit before he actually walks away. You can click him in that time and it will count for you. Now this um, theater is a big circle. See? So basically what you do is you, and they've got little side rooms here, see these little side rooms. You basically just run around in this place keeping an eye on your mini-map, because it's way easier to see the rings in your mini-map than it is in person, um, and checking these side rooms till you find all five of the dudes. Like I said, kind of tedious, kind of annoying. Sometimes you get lucky and they're literally all in a row. There's one right there. 
and you don't have to run around like a crazy person. But sometimes there's lots of other people in here and it can be kind of a pain in the ass. But again, you can't get lost in here. Now see this one? He is one of the musicians. We clicked him already. He was the first one up on that balcony or up on the in the theater. He doesn't have a ring anymore and he spawned somewhere else. Like how annoying is that? So if you see them and they don't have a ring, it means you just got them already and you just you you basically just gotta keep looking around. Um I haven't found a better way of doing this one yet, if anyone knows of one. <laughs> Feel free to add it. There's one. So we ran past this area before, and he wasn't here because there's someone else in the theater with us. So we're at 5-6. I'll cut it here so that you guys can take your time looking for the other ones. Oh, she's right there. Oh my god, you guys got lucky. Sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes I run in here for 10 minutes going, what the fuck? All right, that's it. Once you're done, turn around, go back to the entrance, which is this south part right here. Turn in this dude. Finish. And you're done. That is it. That is the whole festival route. Um, now all that's left is brief turn-ins. So get on your horse. We are going to ride to the Horse Master, which is right here on the same tier. So I will meet you there. Okay, so we're at the Horse Master of the player's tier, like I just said. We're going to take this one to the Soldier's tier. Travel. And you don't have to get off. You can just ride it up. Let it ride, they say. Straight ahead, turn in this guy's quest, finish. Turn right around, take the stable master up to high stables and get off as soon as your screen loads. So dismount, get on whatever horse you want, turn around. And again, we're going to turn in now. So we're going hard right, hard right, all the way back, up the ramp to the citadel. And so go right back to the quest people that you've first picked up, so she should have four here to finish. That ails you. And go left to the um, cook that we picked up the one from. Turn in his. Done. And then just past and to the left is the florist. She will have one to turn in. Finish. Now you're almost done. You have one last turn in. And this is where the route completes. So we're going to ride back down that ramp we just came up. And we're going to take this stable to the very bottom floor where we first started. And remember I said at the beginning of the video to always collect that wrapper quest? Well, we're going to turn in that wrapper quest right now. And when you finish that wrapper quest, you'll be standing in front of that NPC. So tomorrow, or whatever day you come back, when you go to pick up again, you're, you start standing right in front of where you need to be. So that's, that's how the loop completes. And then you just do the same pattern we just did over and over and over. So take the stable, city stables, travel. See, there she is, the rapper lady. Click her, turn in, and you're done. That is it. Complete. No more. Um, the barters for the items are up at the very top. That lady that we picked up all the quests from very up at the very top. That's where you barter for the suits and items and pets and everything. Um, so I would log off here, and then tomorrow when I start this tune, this quest will be available. Start with her right away. And then I would go here to the stables, do the quest in there, come out. Then I would take the stable to high stables, which is the very top, go up to the top, pick up all those quests we just turned in, and repeat the whole video that we just did, basically. And that's it. Hopefully um, that was easy for you guys. If we go to the wallet, let's see here. Midsummer tokens, 48. So that route that we just did, 48 tokens uh, in one route, and it didn't take that long. So there you go. That's all I've got for you. Hopefully it was easy. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you again to Trefolia for the amazing route that was way easier than doing them all. <laughs> See you guys next time.